Now in this video we're going to go ahead and finish up our conditional statement here for um, our first 10% radio button that we have. And I've got the math done now. The only thing I need to do now is um, before I actually place it back, this, this total, before I place it back in the text box I want to work with, I'm going to need to do some formatting on that number. And the reason being is because uh, when we talk about a double, it can hold a very large amount of decimal values. And when we typically think of money, it's usually within two decimal places. Um, so what we're going to need to do is a little bit of formatting. And so I'm going to type in now in the next line, it's just decimal format. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and give it a name. And for the decimal format, I'm going to go ahead and call it DF. And most people do that in programming. They call it DF for the decimal formatting. And I'm going to set it equal to a new decimal format. And I get to pick what I want for my format now. And you basically put it in parentheses here. And we'll go ahead and put it in double quotes. And you can see that it's filled in the double quotes for me and I'll end up with my semicolon. So this is the basic structure. Within the double quotes is what I want to have for my formatting. And you'll notice I've got some lines here. And the problem is I didn't import this in here. So if I hover over it, you can import it in there. And it will go ahead and put an import up there at the top for us. I'll just show you. And there it is, java.text.decimalformat. So I'll come back down here. So now I've got my decimal format DF. It's equal to a new decimal format. Let's go ahead and click in here between these two double quotes. And here's how this works. We've got two basic symbols to work with. I've got a pound sign and I've got zeros. And I'm going to go ahead and start it with a pound sign. The pound sign makes it so that if the number doesn't exist there, it leaves a blank. Uh, zero works a little bit different in the fact that a zero will mean that it's required. You have to have at least two decimal places there in order to work with. So for instance, let me go ahead and type in zero, zero. And this is the format, meaning if our tip is going to have at least one dollar, then a one will show up. However, if our tip is 50 cents, nothing will show up there to the left of my decimal point. On this side of my decimal point, if I place a zero here, it means that a number will have to show up there. Whether it's, um, well, let's just say it was my tip was one penny. This would typically be a zero, one. Uh, if it was anything less than that, then, well, I guess if it was one dollar, let's say it was one dollar, it would be forced to put a one here, dot zero, zero. Or if it was one dollar or one cent, it would be forced to put a one dot zero, one. Same thing here for the last one. And so the difference basically is the fact that with a zero there instead of a pound sign in my formatting, the number will be forced to show up. If I made that just pound dot pound pound, then if it, the tip was five dollars even, you would just have a five show up rather than the decimal places. And so it just depends on the formatting you want. I would encourage you to mess around with that and just kind of see how the formatting will change on some of the numbers that you type in. But I'm going to go ahead and put in there the pound sign dot zero zero. And that's the formatting that we're structure that we're going to have for our numbers. So now on the next line, what I'm going to say is go ahead and put in there ET2. Um, that's the second text box that we have or the edit text that we have. I'm going to go ahead and say to set the text. This is going to allow me to change that text attribute that I have within this one. And I'm going to go ahead and start the uh, parentheses here. And for the text, I'm going to go ahead and type in DF, which is my decimal format that I have there, dot format. And then within that, I'm going to go ahead and type in the variable, which is going to be my tip. And we'll end that with a semicolon. So you can see that what it's going to do is it's going to set the text of my second edit text that I have to be a formatted version of tip, which is going to be whatever that number was. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter here and do the same thing for my total now. ET3 dot set text. I want the decimal formatted version that I had created. Um, so D, DF dot uh, format. And then I want total in there. And we'll go ahead and end that with the semicolon. All right, so there's my code that I have. Let's go ahead and see if it works. I'm going to run it in my virtual device. We'll go ahead and save all of our changes. And now that the application has started, I'm going to go ahead and unlock it. 
and we'll take a look here. Enter bill amount. I'm just going to go ahead and type in something like $55. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the 10%. And you'll notice it worked. I've got 10% of 55 here, and I've got my total bill there. If I click on 15, nothing happens. If I click on 20, nothing happens because I haven't written code for either of those. So we'll go ahead and minimize that. And now that I've got one of them working, it's not going to be very difficult to get the other ones working. In fact, it's going to be quite easy because all I'll need to do is copy my entire conditional statement, this entire if statement. So from if, and I've got that opening curly brace till its ending curly brace, I want to copy that whole thing. I'll do a control C here. I'm going to space that down some and I'm going to paste some of the code in control V. And what I'm going to do now on this particular code that I've just pasted in is I'm going to say if, and it says if i equals, instead of rb1, I'm going to change it to rb2. And it says get id, and we're going to keep going through here a little bit further. Uh, the edit texts are going to stay the same, so everything in this one looks like it's going to be the same except for instead of 10%, I want 15%. And that looks like it's going to be all I need to change for my conditional statement, I'm going to go ahead and paste in the next one. And so we've got if i equals rb, my radio button, 3. I want to make sure that my math is now going to be 20%. And I believe we have everything done. So I'll go ahead and run it again. Save my changes. And I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And it's going to refresh here. And now that it's here, I'll go ahead and just type in 55 again. We'll do 10%, and it's formatted to two decimal places for me. Notice that the zero does show up, even though um, it's because we put zeros in there. If you replace it with a pound sign, you you shouldn't see the zero sh show up for the cent, for the 50 cent part of that. If I click on 15%, it formats it correctly, and if I go to 20%, I've got this correctly. So this is the tip calculator. And there's a lot of stuff here. There's a lot of new things that are introduced in here. I encourage you to definitely go through and modify some of the code and see if you can get it working right. And I will see you again on the next project.